Uh, I wanted to tell you that we're going to have our, our speaker next. We're just real pleased to have Greg Philipson here from Austin, Texas. Greg is here today to talk about discrimination never takes a vacation. And this is all about, I'm going to let him tell about it, but this really puts uh, the focus on postcards this time, uh, like uh, all of our, we try to have a focus every time on postcards, but uh, this is kind of sad, and but it's historical, and uh, uh, it's something we need to know about and be aware of, and maybe a new collecting theme for you. I like them. So, uh, Greg, let me turn it over to you, and uh, we sure do thank you for coming. Well, you're welcome. You're very welcome. It's nice to see everybody. Today's presentation is really something that is uh, very close to me, being an American of the Jewish faith, um, <clears throat> it, and especially in today's environment where anti-Jewish behavior has just reared its ugly head to... Um, really scary levels again, uh, much like we probably hadn't seen since the 1930s in Europe. But we're going to talk about how did this evolve and what went on in America and sadly is still going on in America. So I thought that through postcards and, and like many of my other collections, it's hard to limit topics like this to just one venue. So we're, we have some other uh, types of things in here that um, are relate directly to hotels and resorts and so on. Um, I want to talk a little bit of something about postcards, but not right here in America for first. You know, usually what happens in Europe kind of finds its way here, just like uh, uh, how America was uh, was developed uh, with our you know European ancestry, if you will. This is a postcard from the late 1800s. And this is, and everything you see here, by the way, unless it's an image of a movie or something I just want to talk about is in our collection. And this postcard is from Frankfurt, Germany, uh, late 1800s. And it's really, really quite a chilling postcard. This Hotel Kolnerhof was run by a guy that would just hated the Jewish people. And at this time, Jews were moving into Frankfurt in fairly large numbers. Jewish people had been residents and citizens of Germany for, for centuries. And uh, this, this particular guy just didn't like that. And on this postcard, for those of you who may not speak German, it says that they're the only Jew-free hotel in Frankfurt. That's what it says on that big sign on the left there on the building couple of other really uh, interesting things here. You see the caricature of the Jewish man being booted out of the Kolnerhof Hotel. Well, where he's being booted to with his belongings scattered and so on, and of course the you know hook nose and traditional Jewish caricature, um, he's going to the Hofbahnhof, which is the, the Frankfurt rail station. So he's throwing him out of the hotel, but he wants him out of Frankfurt altogether. And then, of course, he's calling Frankfurt the New Jerusalem, and inst instead of the, uh, and, and he's saying that it's Frankfurt now, uh, not on the Main River, but on the Jordan River. So again, all these uh, Jewish connotations here. The back of the postcard has this uh, rubber stamp, this violet or purple rubber stamp here, that says, uh, you know, greetings from the Jew-free uh, Hotel Kolnerhof is what that says at the very top. So this is, these are the kinds of things that uh, many people collect, these kinds of pieces. This is another one from 1898, also from the Kolnerhof. But notice the Jewish man in the top hat, the, um, the large nose rubbing his beard. Um, he's being thrown out of this restaurant at the Kolnerhof. And if you notice the placards on the table, as well as the large placard on that center post, just to the left of the bartender there, it says Jews basically aren't welcome here. Uh, they're forbidden at the Kolnerhof Hotel. And that's all over the tables and so on. And once again, it's the New Jerusalem, you know, the, um, the Frankfurt Jordan River and so on. So these are the kinds of things that are different than what many people see, which I, I hate using the term comic, but comic anti-Jewish postcards 
um, that are quite prevalent. Many people find those uh, uh, serious collectibles as well. And they come along the lines more of this sort of card, um, you know, posted in the early 1900s here in the U.S. in Newark, New Jersey. And this one is really a, a, a very rare card, I think. It's copyrighted 06, but it was postmarked in 07. Um, notice there's almost, you know, a half a dozen different Jewish tropes, anti-Jewish tropes on here. Notice where it says our friend is fire, our enemy is the fire department. Jewish people were always one of those stereotypes that they wanted to burn down their businesses, selling old clothes, uh, old gold and silver. And of course, you see in all the corners, the three balls, which are the pawnbroker symbols. And of course, that's our flag. And uh, uh, look at that caricature of the uh, man holding the flag. So these are the kinds of things that started showing up in America as a result of the other anti-Jewish stuff that was coming from, from Europe. Now, this card is, you know, again, one of these, quote, comic political cards. But again, you're starting to see that the Jews are all communist. Um, they're, uh, you know, beating the working class people. They're pulling the wagon, USSR, both in Russian and in, in English letters. And of course, the profiteer Jewish guy uh, with his wife there and the skeleton with the uh, scyther, the sickle. So these things are uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat. And uh, again, these aren't really, they're comic in the sense of they're, you know, drawn like that. But these are serious, serious anti-Jewish things, as you can obviously see. So let's go to the, the, the real topic at hand today. Um, I do not have this. This is an image I took from a friend of mine. And I've not seen this, but I think there's a couple of museums that have the Jewish vacation guide. As you can see by the picture, it's most likely from the 19 teens, uh, maybe 1920. But it's published by the Federation of Jewish Farmers of America in New York. And it was hotels, boarding, and rooming houses where Jews are welcome. And this is the real beginning where Jews were not welcome uh, at many, many places throughout the United States. And I think we'll make that point through the postcards and other, other things uh, in this presentation. Some of you may be aware of this anti-Jewish hotel or restricted clientele uh, movie called The Gentleman's Agreement. And this is a, uh, you know, just an image of it, you know, huge star uh, cast, Gregory Peck, Dorothy McGuire, John Garfield. And uh, Peck in this particular movie decided that he really didn't believe a lot of this anti-Semitism was going on. And he decided to get his family, they were pretending they were Jewish, and what it was like to live in, um, in, in, in America during this time, traveling and being a Jewish person. And this is, I, I'm only putting this in here because it talks directly to the hotel scene. So this is Gregory Peck. This is the hotel clerk. He's going over trying to get a room. And eventually it comes out, he purposely tells them that he's Jewish. So the guy says, well, I'm sorry, um, you know, you can't stay here. I have to get the manager. So the manager comes out, that's this guy. You see this other couple in the back just doing whatever they're doing at the uh, uh, registration desk. And this guy's basically telling him, don't cause a scene, um, but you, you're not gonna stay here, leave. And uh, this is where he is making a little bit of a fuss. And notice in this image here, people to the left and to the right of Gregory Peck, look at the look of disdain that they have now that he's even attempting to stay there as a Jewish man. So this is 1947, mind you, is when the movie came out. So let's look at some of the things that people used over the many years to indicate that Jews weren't able to stay at a particular place. Restricted clientele, selector, selected clientele, Christian clientele only, um, uh, Gentile clientele, Positively, no Jews, pretty obvious on that one. No Hebrews, discriminating and discriminating public. So there's a whole bunch of these things that were, in some cases, code words, in other cases, obviously, write out anti-Jewish behavior to the nth degree. So here's an interesting little story. So um, the Holocaust Museum down in Houston came to me and said, geez, we're bringing in the Green Book exhibit. 
And for those of you who didn't see the movie or know about the Green Book itself, it was a book published for Black people in America uh, in, in the early parts of the 20th century where Black people could stay safely. They weren't, uh, and obviously uh, uh, being Black and having Black uh, darker colored skin, um, it was pretty obvious when they walked in um, that they weren't going to be able to stay there. But at this Green Book exhibit, it is a Holocaust museum. Um, and uh, I thought that it would be really important to put some stuff in there that it wasn't just for one group of people, that this was racism against Jewish people uh, the same. And this was the case of some of the materials. You'll see all of these today uh, and much more. But this was uh, an, an exhibit they put out as you were walking into the Green Book exhibit. And for those of you that saw the Green Book uh, movie, uh, you know what that was like, uh, basically, for a Black man traveling in the South um, during the uh, uh, 1960s. Um, it was pretty rough stuff, obviously. So let's take a look. This is not a postcard, but it is uh, an original piece of letterhead from the Osborne House. Um, and this is really quite chilling. He says, no Hebrews taken. This uh, is original piece of letterhead, original writing, 1896 here in America um, in Wyndham, New York. So where you might not think it was going on, you can see the American flag and that beautiful etching um, at, the, at the top there. Beautiful uh, scenery, but no Hebrews taken. And here's what it looks like blown up for you. I know it's a little blurry, but uh, that's the best I could do it with the small text. So that, that's what we're up against, uh, even in the early days. Here's a, uh, a 1942 U.S. fully engulfed in the war, Jewish people being murdered all over Europe. My father, other family members, my uncle killed in action with the 26th Infantry fighting for this country. Uh, and in Lake Luzerne, New York, Christian clientele only, no Jews. So uh, it's, uh, you know, $5 deposit guarantees your accommodation, apply to your account, Christian, clientele selected, Christian. So there you go. There's no if and ands about it, clientele selected, but they know who they want. This one is a brochure for my Daytona Beach, Florida. And remember, uh, on the East Coast, Florida was a huge vacation spot for people from New York and New England coming down to try to get out of the uh, difficult winters, like in Utica, New York, where I grew up. So look at this. Notice, please, that these brochures have AAA logos and many other logos from hotel and motel associations on it. So this is uh, uh, the Williams Hotel. And the one I really get drives me nuts on this one, skilled chefs and good food served by white waitresses tempt your appetite. So not only is this, uh, you know, selected clientele, they, it, you know, restricted, um, but that they are so concerned that they don't even have black people working there. Now, this is Gregory Beach, a piece of letterhead, and they have a couple of different versions of this up in Northern Michigan. And uh, Mr. Gregory himself, he goes right after it. Positively, no Jews. So there, there is a doozy of a, a um, piece of letterhead. This is probably 1940s by the look of that photograph. It's not dated. Now, this one is the Hyde Manor, which is um, in, uh, in Vermont. And I'm trying to show a variety of things to give you an idea that this was going on all over the country. He writes, Hebrews have never been entertained at the manor. And that's pretty serious stuff that they're just letting you know since 1801, um, Jewish people have not been able to stay in Sudbury, Vermont at the manor. And the good news is I found this because I did some research. I was really happy to see that this is the manor today. So he's doing a brisk business for ghosts and uh and other paranormals. Now, here we go. So here we have the Causeway Trailer Court in Fort Pierce Beach, Florida. And he has selected clientele. So if you were a Jewish person traveling at this time in 1961, this is not ancient history, 1961, you would not be able to park your trailer at the Causeway Trailer Park in Florida. 
And here we have restricted, these guys are, I use this one, it's 1949 after the war. Let's say my dad gets back and he wants to go to Florida having fought in three major campaigns across Europe, carefully restricted clientele, he would not have been able to stay or my grandparents having lost their only son uh, killed in action would not be able to stay at this hotel. So this is a, a really chilling kind of stuff postmarked in Fort Lauderdale. Um, this is a, a card up in Hyannis, Massachusetts. Never been known uh, to be very friendly for people of the Jewish faith. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, uh, I'll call it a waspy kind of environment. But uh, anyway, this one is guest rooms for restricted clientele all year. And notice, just coincidentally, also since 1801, uh, and no Jews have been able to stay there. They're very proud of these things. Um, this is the Park Hotel in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And as you can see, they're catering to a very discriminating clientele, make no bones about it. And that candidly is a beautiful property. And the thing that really annoys me about some of these cards um, are when you see the American flag flying over something that is so discriminating, uh, and, and you can imagine, I mean, it's the same thing for a black person, right? I mean, I'm sure that uh, if a black person walked in there, um, they, they would be escorted out immediately. I really like this card because I don't have a lot of them that are the, uh, I think you call them panoramic cards. Some of you that are really into specifically postcards uh, would find that, uh, would know that term. But anyway, it's, it's, it's a very elongated card, and it's the only one I have in, in this particular venue. Uh, it says a vacation resort, resort of the most discriminating. So uh, there you go. It's not. It hasn't been postmarked, but you can see that. I guess by the cars, uh, uh, the car aficionados will know. But that was semi like 1950s uh, uh, kind of automobiles. And here's one from 1943. Select clientele. Dear Grandma, I'm going in for a swim now. Love Mildred. And uh, that was Asbury Park. Um, uh, New Jersey. So this is New York, New Jersey, Arkansas, Florida, uh, Vermont, uh, U Massachusetts, you name it. This is going on everywhere. And this one is the reef. And this one is even closer. And Hal, you heard me talk about this one when I, I gave the, a similar presentation to the American Topical Association recently. And this one is, is a very difficult card. So here you are in 1968. Lauderdale by the sea in Florida, and Jews are not able to stay here. Now, imagine being a Jewish person in the military, 1968, the heat of the Vietnam War. A postcard is out there, pray for peace, but don't allow a Jew to stay at your hotel. This one really, really gets under my skin personally. And uh, so these are really, really difficult things um, if you're a Jewish person or anyone that cares about uh, human rights and, 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 and trying to have everybody equal under the eyes of God. These are very, very difficult, difficult cards for me to show you. Um, here's one uh, at the Henrietta. Uh, you know, it's it, it, it just always this is high class Gentile uh, clientele. So if some of our Gentile friends are not high class enough, um, you're not allowed to stay there. But basically, it's uh, telling you that it's uh, really off limits to Jewish people and others. All these little secret things, restricted clientele, uh, the sanderling on the beach. Uh, this is 1947. And this card is, is another tough one. Look at that triple A logo. And you know AAA knows what's going on on these cards. And uh, it just one after the other, restricted clientele, AAA insured, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Wow, beautiful little place. You know, if you're on the road back in the day, um, you know, 1957, um, and this is America on the move, right? Post-World War II, everybody's owning cars, and these were the places people needed to stay. And if you were on the road and you needed a place, it got dark to, to sack out for a while. Don't stop here. Not if you're Jewish. And here's another one, 64, right back to the same thing about, you know, pray for peace. 
uh, Vietnam War 1964, and this one has three different certifications, has quality court certification, the AAA and a uh, motel association uh, logo on there that they contribute to, that they're meeting everybody's standards, uh, no pets and uh, no Jews, basically, when it says selected clientele. Goes on and on. Here's one, uh, Clearwater, Florida. You know, that's a little bit up uh, uh, northern, uh, central Florida, if you will. The Mayflower Colony. Uh, you know, many of these smaller places like this were all privately owned uh, and had no problems whatsoever uh, telling you that they're restricted, as this one does uh, in, in the text there. Now, this one's very colorful, kind of an artsy sort of card. Um, AAA, uh, Quality Courts, Duncan Hines, I guess if you wanted to make brownies, and uh, AAA uh, for discriminating tourists. So does that mean people that really want to stay someplace nice? Don't think so. It's really telling you that it is for the discriminating tourist who doesn't want to stay someplace where there's people that they don't want to be around. Uh, here's one, 36 modern units for discriminating people. The Virginia court, big AAA banner hanging right off of their big, beautiful uh, uh, sign. And look in the bottom there. Look at the American flag flying and just sad, really, really sad stuff. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, restricted clientele. This one's 1956. So this is, like I'm saying, this isn't ancient history, what we're looking at at the whole Hotel Kölnerhof uh, in, in 1898, for example. Here's the uh, Kerlu Lodges, and this is clientele restricted. So they just decided maybe it was a little softer if they reversed the words. But um, this is these are all these kinds of places. This one Lake Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Didn't matter where Jewish people would travel throughout the United States, there was always some place where we wouldn't be able to stay. And this one is Gentile clientele only in Wyndham, New York. Again, these are brochures, but this is what would be sent out through the mail uh, advertising their properties. Uh, so they wouldn't pick up a postcard perhaps while you were staying there, but it may be that this went through the mail in an envelope, uh, more from a philatelic standpoint than a, uh, the postcard area. Um, this one is serving a Christian clientele, very proud of the fact that they're doing it since 1879. And uh, George H. Smiley and his son really don't want Jewish people staying at their beautiful resort. Here's another one. This one's pretty old. I wasn't able to date this, but this one's pretty old. Uh, Front Street in Marblehead, Massachusetts. And uh, this is just um, absolutely a discriminating patronage. Not surprising up in this particular area at that time, but nonetheless uh, makes it no easier to look at these. And here's one. This is the Bayview Bungalows in Provincetown, Massachusetts. And this one is Christian patronage only, only. It's not like we welcome Christians and it's a Christian place and we have Christian services. It is only for if a Jewish person wanted to stay there, they can't do that. And uh, it's um, pretty scary stuff, pretty, pretty scary stuff. And it goes on and on. I like this one. This is really rare. The Atlantic House, Old Orchard, Beach, Maine. And look at that, Hebrew patronage, not solicited. So that one slam dunk, there's no, uh, uh, no code words or anything here for this particular one. Uh, here we have Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh, they want uh, with a warm Christian atmosphere. So I don't know, all my Christian friends kind of welcome me of being a Jewish person. And uh, uh, that's what I would consider a warm Christian atmosphere. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not certain that um, uh, I'm sure the food was good and it was air conditioned, but I'm, I'm not sure if it was really what I think a Christian atmosphere, at least what I've envisioned it to be, uh, would, would, would be. Um, all these different terminologies and so on. So you can see this refined clientele only. Um, I don't know whether 
people that put their elbows on the table, on the dinner table, like my grandmother would always tell me to get take off, weren't, weren't be allowed, but we know that Jews weren't staying there. And this one in Fort Lauderdale again, and remember there was tremendous, tremendous, which is interesting now because Fort Lauderdale people moved down there and eventually, you know, if you couldn't stay there, you opened your own hotel. I mean, that's what you had to do. Uh, this one is a nice property down there. It's a restricted clientele in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, here's one from 1941. And this is obviously before we're in the war, uh, which uh, was until December. But again, it's during that period of all the chaos in Europe and rounding up Jewish people and others uh, by, by the Nazis, the German people, and there are far too many collaborators. Uh, this is discriminating clientele. I mean, it's a lovely property, but I, I don't understand this mentality. It's just not in my makeup. Um, in New Jersey, uh, Lake uh, Mohawk, this is another, um, um, you know, go to Sparta. And this one is the largest restricted lake in New Jersey. Wow. So uh, it's a beautiful card. I mean, it's a nice swimming pool. Looks like an almost an Olympic-sized pool. Plenty of lifeguards. Everybody's having a great time. But if you're Jewish, don't. Please don't stop by uh, to Sparta, in Sparta. Um, even um, these kinds of places, the Phantom Valley Guest Ranch, restricted clientele. Wow, this is Grand Lake, Colorado. And look at that. I mean, who wouldn't want to be there? Look, at it's just incredibly gorgeous scenery. Um, you know, this uh, 1947, uh, another unbelievable place that just uh, is just not interested in having Jewish clientele. Uh, Hotel Duke, Gentile clientele, Miami Beach. This is a brochure. This one is really kind of interesting. It's oceanfront luxury. These are fairly substantial properties. These aren't roadside motels. That's a large, large building on the beach. And the Sovereign, uh, not only did they say uh, Gentile clientele on the front of the foldover brochure, but they love it here. They actually mention it as a really nice feature. We've got entertainment and a steam heat and fireproof facility. It's new. We've got a solarium, lifeguards, a private beach, and Gentile client clientele. So come on in. No Jews are going to be here to bug you. And this one, I love this card. This is a pretty rare one. It's from 47. It wasn't posted. But this guy's got a sign out in this dump. <laughs> he, this little place, he doesn't want you staying there. I guess, uh, not, not sure what his logic is. But in Beulah, Michigan, which that whole area was really known for their anti-Jewish behavior, uh, he's got the sign right smack out on his front yard, uh, restricted clientele. In the Ethan Allen camps, um, this is in Vermont, select clientele. Please don't come here. Beautiful place. Have a great time. And you won't run into any Jewish people uh, during your visit. And then here's America's finest hotel cottages, clientele carefully restricted. So I don't know what, what that means. I don't know if, uh, you know, if... Uh, how they're going to determine who's who. We're not going to go there. But uh, anyway, they want to make sure that they're really carefully restricting their clientele. So you don't really have to worry about running into a Jewish person there in Biloxi. Uh, this one's 1938 restricted clientele. And that's one of those little um, accordion type postcard things that was mailed um, in, in Pennsylvania, uh, sent to New Jersey, as you can see that from Milford, Pennsylvania in the heart of the Poconos. The Avalon, Avon by the Sea, Christian clientele. And they look like they're really seriously um, advertising to a really dumb client base. Look at the sign on the right-hand side of the postcard. <laughs> they have to put a sign up there that says ocean. So uh, I guess um, the people they're trying to get are um, either low on the IQ spectrum or something, but I couldn't quite figure that out. No Jews could stay there, but people that couldn't figure out the ocean are okay. That's good. Anyway, the Blue Water, restricted clientele in this brochure, $2 per person, two in a room, and uh, their restricted uh, clientele in Fort Lauderdale on the beautiful intercoastal highway.
uh, this one, look at the top of that card, that giant triple A logo. And these are the kinds of things that I call these organizations, just like the people that supported the Germans during World War II and their brutalization of so many people. I call these organizations willing participants in hate. And you can see their logo on the bottom of the sign. You see it in the middle of their postcard. And it's just disgusting that um, these organizations were able to support this in discriminating comfort. Another little code word. And here's one discriminating clientele. Uh, looks like, I'm not sure if that car's 1960s, uh, but, uh, you know, beautiful people by the, uh, by the swimming pool there. And uh, as long as no Jewish person sewed up, the water will be clean and everybody will be happy. And this one is a little different. So the Lago, the Lago Mar Hotel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, um, they don't seem to mention anything about the Jewish people, but I bought this card for the message on it. Um, what, 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 uh, what, uh, weather is simply great. Been here three times. Very friendly, lovely people. No Jews. So there's a guy that loves that place because they don't advertise. Maybe on this card they don't advertise. Maybe somewhere else they do. But he's really pleased that he's staying there, that there's no Jewish people at that hotel to um, spoil his stay. Uh, this one, the playground of southern Wisconsin. Um, he's got restricted at the top of the card, not on the back, on the front center, right next to that AAA logo. Really quite unbelievable and, uh, and, and quite, quite chilling. Now this one, this uh, you, you might have been able to see the large blue item in the, uh, this is one of those giant oversized match uh, matchbook covers, really large. And uh, right on their matchbooks, even the Broadmoor by the Sea, um, they uh, in Miami Beach, Florida, Gentile clientele, make no bones about it. You're Jewish, don't stay here. You're not allowed. And even in Radio City, at the uh, at, at adjoining Radio City, at the Hotel Bristol, uh, don't stay there either because uh, they're catering to a select clientele. Um, so that's, um, that's what's going on in 1946. Um, uh, I think the other thing about this card I wanted to mention was, you know, because my mom's family were my were my uncle that was uh, killed in action during the war. Um, they're from Yonkers, which is, you know, basically, right, you know, connects to New York City right there at the Bronx. And uh, it, it's really kind of really sad stuff. You can just imagine how they felt uh, when they saw this kind of stuff. It, it, it's heartbreaking, actually, for me personally. Um, over 500 Christian families have established vacation and year-round homes since 1930. This is postmarked 1935. Is a restricted Gentile colony. It's not just a community. It's a colony. It's a subset of, of American way of life. Uh, really, really scary stuff. And uh, uh, postmarked in New York State. And here's another one, the Ocean Ranch and Villas. Um, selected clientele. Um, this one, I think, I might have one from 1971, but look at that postmark from Pompano Beach, Florida. 1970. Wow. I, I, I'm a university student in 1970. Uh, this is really remarkable stuff. So uh, really, really difficult, really difficult. And here's another one. This is uh, select clientele. Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Not much going on on the card. It wasn't postmarked, but it, I wanted to find something a little bit more, a little further west. Um, and uh, there you go, as, as far west as you go before California, you got Albuquerque right there. Uh, here's another one, Oceanfront Hotel. Um, this one is uh, uh, Select Clientele. And um, uh, New Jersey again, Ocean Grove, New Jersey. So these things aren't places where you might normally think um, you know, Jewish people traveling and so on would have a difficult time. Um, the, it, it's, it's countrywide. Oakland, California, postmarked 1929 in San Francisco. Supposed to be one of the glorious cities, um, you know, in the universe and open to everybody. Lake Merritt, 
in the center of the restricted residential district. So not only is it just a place, it's a complete residential district is restricted, no Jews. And here we have another one, dear cousin, hope you're all having a great time. New York, um, you know, it, it's uh, postmarked at the Grand Central Station. And uh, just another one, you know, they just don't have Jewish people stay here. Great cards, beautiful hotel. And here's one, uh, they put their advertise. you know, this is an advertising card, right? They've got all their uh, rates and so on on here. And uh, por um, spacious porches for family groups of selected clientele. So I guess if I had shown up there, I'm not even supposed to go on the porch to take a look in the window to see what I'm missing. And here's one, the uh, downtown motor hotel in Tucson. And I don't think I'm covering all 50 states today, but we're getting close. And uh, again, you can see that this is, uh, you know, looks like a 1940s car there uh and a distinguished clientele very distinguished it's such a high class place and once again notice the triple a uh motor club logo uh, on the uh, stem of their sign and this one is the veranda uh, lodge hotel in saint petersburg and uh just like all of the other ones restricted clientele beautiful porches and awnings be a beautiful place to stay when you were traveling through florida and uh, just not if you're a jewish person and the Miami Beach Tudor Hotel, of course, that was a lovely place. This one I really like because not only do I have the brochure, I have the envelope, um, the cover that was posted in Miami Beach uh, in 1947. And what you've got here is a blow up, uh, a uh, enlarged version of what's inside here. And uh, it says uh, Beach's gayest activities yet enjoying the quiet of home-like atmosphere and a discriminating clientele. So you could uh, really be have gay activities and have fun. Uh, and when you stay at the Tudor, um, but you, you, you could discriminate all you want. And the Hotel Broad Ripple, another one, there you go. Just look at those American flags flying. I mean, to me, that's a beautiful property. You see the little power boat, the speed boat there in the... Uh, uh, the canal running in front of the hotel, and they've got all the great stuff. They have a coffee shop, a cocktail lounge, a roof solarium, and everything. Uh, just don't stay there if you're Jewish, because we cater to a selected clientele. And uh, this, oh, this is the mountain ones again. I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot to take that one out. Oak Haven Mobile Park Home Park. So uh, we have some other folks from Texas here, not right in Arlington, but Fort Worth's a little closer to Arlington than I am. And this one is a doozy. So this is a trailer park that doesn't want Jews to stay there. See where it says paved streets, but we're restricted. And this is in 1967, a few hours away from my home in Austin, Texas. I would not have been able to live in a mobile home in Arlington, Texas at this beautiful Oak Haven facility. Unbelievable. And this particular one, Roberts Beach Hotel in uh, uh, Miami. Uh, again, they've got their um, select clientele thing. Buy war savings bonds and stamps. Fight for our glorious nation. Best place anybody could grow up and live, that's for sure. But boy, if you're a Jewish person, don't stay here. You can fight and die for us, but don't stay here. Uh, another one, this one has got a couple of different cards. I just did the back of one of them. Um, this one is, um, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, um, in uh, Mountain Home PA. When I lived in Pittsburgh for many years, I don't even know where Mountain Home is. I didn't look it up, I'm sorry. But anyway, you can get the idea here that they're having a big weenie roast there. And uh, they've got also a beautiful uh, outdoor pool there. It's quite a large uh, pool facility. Christian clientele. Um, we're going to have a weenie roast, and um, I suspect that maybe the cost of a kosher hot dog was a little too much for them, so they elected to not have Jewish people stay there. Now, I want to go into something really personal here. I grew up in Utica, New York. My grandfather was Louis Philipson, and he, uh, my family owned uh, uh, Army and Navy stores uh, uh, throughout upstate New York. And my grandfather was a real personality in the, in the whole uh, central New York area. 
He was known as Uncle Louie, and he did live TV commercials starting in the 1960s right from the store on Channel 2 in Utica. So what this is referencing is some of that. So in 1955, I'm a young man, uh, Utica, New York, my grandfather gets this letter at the store. It's at the corner of uh, Genesee and, and uh, Liberty Streets in Utica. And it says, why don't you get off the air? And my grandfather, like me and my friends and other kids, everybody wanted to be on the show, adults and everything. It was a blast. And why don't you get off the air? You love the kiddies just for their money. What did a Jew do for a Gentile? If you give the boys a coat, you take off the buttons to get, uh, and then it says you've got too much bullshit. What we want is Hitler over here to clean the Jews out. A Jew motto is really ready, aim, and fire. That's the same as Martin's and Burger's. Those were two other Jewish uh, retail stores in Utica. Uh, done something. A good job. Um, uh, a good job. Never buy off a Jew. God hate them. Get off the air. M. Roberts. Can you imagine my grandmother getting that and opening the mail or my grandfather opening that? And she saved it. And I'm glad I have it here in my collection. This was a photograph and another lot of things I bought, something to do with uh, World War II, my Holocaust collection. And this photograph, as you see it, was in there. And I don't know where this is, what beach this is, but it just gives you an idea of somebody, all the normal people sitting around and the little Jew of some a baby in a carriage. Um, it's Jew, Jew, Jew. And then you see this, uh, you know, this like hulky guy laying there. He's a pole. So, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, wh why would someone do something like that? And this is a, um, I'm not sure, I can't remember if it's a real photo postcard or not. But anyway, I thought it was... Um, chilling enough to give you an idea of what's going through people's heads. This is a classic in the collection. Um, this is dated 1871. So what this is, it's very difficult to read, but this guy that wrote the letter is sending off a, uh, this handwritten letter to the, sing the Singer Sewing Machine Company in New York City. And it's gentlemen, it's our uh, Jonas, whoever this guy is, Jew, who's a merchant tailor of this city. Um, is try He's afraid that the Jew is going to go to the Singer Sewing Machine Company and try to get a better deal than maybe by direct than getting it whatever, that it's going to be unfair practice for him who must be competing with this guy. Um, unbelievable. But what's the best part of it is for those of you who don't know, Isaac Singer, who invented the Singer sewing machine and owned this business, was a Jewish man. So can you imagine him getting this letter, um, his, his thoughts about, uh, I would have loved to seen, if he sent a respond, response, I would have loved to seen the uh, response to this guy in Steubenville, Ohio. Um, have any of you ever seen these kinds of things? The Jewish nickel, you see it on the bottom of the... Uh, uh, um, uh, the little uh, Eagle Magic Company catalog there from Minneapolis. I have a bunch of these in my collection I was able to find over the years. Um, here's the uh, Roderick Novelty Company in Indiana. They love selling the Jewish nickel. Uh, it's a caricature of a Jewish man, the beard, the hook nose. And of course, all of them had the pawnbroker symbol uh, for good luck, uh, indicating a Jewish um, uh, pawn, you know, pawn owner, pawn business owner. Here they are. There's two of the, uh, I have more than this, but here's two of the ones specifically from my collection. Pretty gross stuff. And I wanted to give you an idea of how this happens and how the governments can actually be in this. And I use these because these they're not postcards, but they did go through the mail. So this is the post office department of the United, uh, of the Office of the Inspector uh, in charge in Philadelphia of the U.S. Post Office. And this, they're looking for a fugitive, Edward Bauman. Now, he's of Jewish birth, but he speaks good English. Wow. And look at the date on this, 1937. This isn't like, you know, the 1800s people coming off the boat. So, I mean, you know, Jewish people could be crooks like anybody else, right? I mean, in the case of many of these people think that we're all crooks, but... 
Um, this, this is really quite a chilling thing, that this is coming directly from the U.S. government, and that's the way they describe uh, a, a, a man, a fugitive, uh, Edward Bauman. Now, this one is, to me, is, is just beyond belief. This is 1935. The U.S. Department of Justice, Hitler came to power in 33. They're already putting in laws by 35 against Jews and other people in Europe. And here we are watching all this go on. And this is a Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., wanted poster. It went through the mail to a sheriff in Lebanon, New Hampshire in 1935. Race, Jew, but face bears none of Jewish features. Holy smokes, can you imagine this? Can you possibly, possibly get more racist than that um, uh, in, in, in a description from the federal government? So if you wonder what we've been up against for a long time, no one should be surprised what's what's rearing its ugly head in the news every day here at universities and everywhere around our own country here. Um, here's one. This is from a Colonel T.M. Crawford. And uh, I know we have a lot of stamp collectors here, too. So you'll really uh, this one ought to make you all sick. Uh, New York, 1947, you know, air, uh, air station, stationary uh, sent airmail. And uh, what he's writing is this long thing, but I just highlighted the top here. He wants to buy some stamps. He says, uh, can shop easily as I am only two blocks from Nassau Street, which is the U.S. Stamp Center. Over 100 dealers on the one street and all with hooked noses. Sincerely, Tom. Wow, there's a lovely thing about uh, Jewish people in the stamp business. So uh, it goes on and on. Here's another one. Uh, this is from 19, uh, what is it, Tw uh, 22, I guess. Um, so it says, uh, oh, 1892, I'm sorry, 1892 from Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, my proper partnership with Joe Cantor fell through for want of funds, and I am rather glad of it for he is a pretty slick Jew, and I'm afraid I ain't quite sharp enough to watch the Jews. These are all in my collection, by the way, uh, just to document this. And he's obviously staying at a hotel, beautiful hotel stationery uh, for back then. And again, that's um, 19th century uh, um, anti-Jewish behavior. Here's one right during the war. And we know that in the US military, anti-Semitism during World War II is rampant. Uh, but here's one from a guy, U.S. Army Air Force is free Frank. You know, if you're active military, there's no need for postage even today. And um, uh, here it is, 1944. And here's his letter, the part of the letter I wanted to highlight. The weather is perfect, but the air smells from so damn many Jews around. It's awful. They just stand around and stare haven't even the sense of decency enough to take off their hats when the flag goes by. I still think Hitler is right about some things. Now, this is a guy in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II. Uh, it, this is just, just heartbreaking. And I think I'm ending with this one because this is a very, very rare postcard that is in our collection. I cropped it neatly so you could see the image, but the card is cut on the edges like you see on the back. And all, I don't know, some kids scribbled on it somewhere. This is Leo Frank in 1950-15. Um, he went down, he's originally from Puerto, Texas, but he was in New York. He went down to work in his uncle's pencil factory in Marietta. And he was uh, accused of raping and murdering, uh, uh, what was her name, Mary Fagan, a young woman that worked at the uh, pencil factory. Uh, history, you know, exonerated him and so on. However, um, even though he was in jail, they pulled him out and lynched him. And this is a really scary postcard. That You see that blanket wrapped around him? His last request was they had him there hanging naked, except for his shirt. And he asked that to please cover him uh, from a modesty standpoint before they hung him. And not one person, as you see, you see the camera on the left, this is an iconic image. 
not one of those people were even brought to justice, let alone convicted. No one was arrested and uh, they just did it and went on and the poor guy, they stretched his neck and uh, left him hanging like that and just stood around and admired it. Eight, 31 years old. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen that postcard before, but it's a, uh, a real chilling telling tale of anti-Semitism in America. And with that, I say thank you for your very kind attention. I'm willing to take some questions. Uh, however, I, I do want to say that this is a very difficult presentation for me to give, but it's very timely uh, and uh, very necessary. So thank you all. And I'm going to stop sharing and turn it back to uh, Hal and or Alan. Thank you, for, Greg. It's just amazing. And I did see your program several weeks ago, but this you had so much more tonight. This was just unbelievable. Uh, let's go to uh, Bill Burton and see if we have any questions or uh, comments and so forth, please. It's a little bit overwhelming here. Um, a number of people have just sort of registered their embarrassment and disgust. And I'll, I'll give you one example. Ashley Aaron said, uh, uh, it's embarrassing for, te for Arkansas, but it's no surprise. Um, and I, I think th there's such a such a, a disconnect between today and and the old days. 19, the 1940s, after all, were 80 years ago, and maybe things have changed, and maybe they haven't. Um, but for for people to to feel embarrassed about it is, I think, a good thing. Um, Clarissa Ferreira says uh, it's incredible, but I'm reading the uh, a book right now, and it does not surprise me. War against the weak. Uh, eugenics in America's campaign to create a master race by Edwin Black. It, it's sad. And I, I don't know, if Claire asks, do you have anything more you want to add to this? Well, it's it's, uh, it's a chilling book, and I just started to read it. It's pretty long, but it's, I strongly recommend if you're interested in the topic, because eugenics is the beginning of Hitler uh, race discrimination and and all started in the United States. We blame Hitler, but actually it all started here with some uh, Carnegie Mellon and other very fine institution that paid for this to happen. So we should you know inform ourselves because I agree when we leave today that discrimination is still happening is like uh, unbelievable for me. Kathy Alpert has sort of turned around the, the this question uh, and and said, uh, "Are cards with references to restricted clientele or what, uh, whatever valuable or just intriguing?" Um, if that's a question to me, that the yes. prices are all over the place. You know, some people sell it; they have no idea what they have. Um, you know, listen, if you're looking for these kinds of cards, I would suggest um, if you find one that looks expensive, search for that same card where somebody doesn't know what it is and you can pick them up. Um, some of these things, some of the brochures are a little bit pricey, but the cards, um, you, you could build a collection relatively inexpensive uh, once you understand and know what to look for. But I, I wouldn't just buy the first one you see. I would, again, go to Hip Postcards or go to Del Camp or other places and look for that same card. You may find one. I really prefer them that are you know used postally um, so you have a date and so on. You can see specifically where they were used. Um, so, you know, search around. Don't just jump on the first one. Look, look for the various, uh, the same card uh, in various sources. I probably have them in my collection now, but just don't even know it. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. go look. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Actually, Billingson, points I, out, I wanted to thank you sorry. for the talk. Um, I remember my mother telling me, certain words I had to look out for. And um, Gentile was one of them because I didn't know how to pronounce it. And um, the other thing I remember a lot of times, well, it was always in the summer seeing people on the subways with numbers on their arms. You still saw quite a bit of that. Yep. Um, you know, from the camps. But I remember she... Uh, gave me a bunch of phrases and words, but I remember that word 
in particular. No, I, I haven't looked in the chat. Thank you, Rick, for that. I just wanted to show you two, a couple of things I put out here. I, and, and again, I don't have scans of them to show you, but this is a uh, little, this was from a uh, collection from uh, Dr. Simon Cohen, and it is all cards. Um, if you can, anybody see that? Sure. That's, 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 uh, I, I have that in the collection. Um, then this one is, uh, the author of this actually sent me this. Um, have you ever seen this book called Hate Mail? Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm sorry to say anybody has because it's really gross. But these are more what I would call in here. And what you're seeing are those cards that are, um, you know, the, they came out of the, all over the place. I shouldn't just say the UK and the US, USA, but... Um, they were more of those comic ones, you know, uh, you know, f caricatures and that sort of thing. Not this really distinct no Jew kind of stuff. And the other one that I wanted to show you, this was published by, uh, I believe, Yad Vashem, the, um, uh, Jerusalem, the Holocaust. Um, yeah, in 2013. Um, this might be hard to find, but this is a, a compilation of actual postcards that a father sent to his um, son that had gone and left, uh, I believe, uh, um, Alan, you can correct me if you chime in here. I think he went on the kinder transport and these were the cards that were sent each, uh, can you see that? There's a description and there's, they have the collection of all these cards that the father as a Jew in Germany would send to his um, son. Uh, who had to be transported away to live with strangers. And uh, the entire collection was kept intact and it's at the museum now. Uh, and it's all postcards. It's an incredible, if you could find it. Wow. Yeah, so. Okay. Anyway. Ashley, uh, Ashley Aarons uh, asks, uh, uh, Greg, uh, did restaurant postcards use similar language? Um, it wasn't just hotels, right? It was. It could, could be any place of public accommodation. Yeah, and I focused on this particular topic. I, to be honest with you, Bill, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I haven't seen them for restaurants and so on. Now, remember, there were a lot of restaurants in these facilities. Um, you know, in that one, which is so chilling, you know, served by white waitresses. Oh my God! <laughs> you know that that's off the charts. Um, uh, so, but I ha I've not seen one. Someone else here maybe could answer that better. I, I don't know of those. Um, and I think my wife would probably kill me if I start looking for those now and create another collection. We don't want any of that. <laughs> uh, Clarissa uh, Perez writes, uh, did they have discrimination against also against other groups of people, Italians, uh, Asians, non-Nordic types? Well, I'm sure they did, but I don't see it on cards. Um, we know for a fact that these are, um, you know, these are sp specific discriminatory things against uh, Jewish people. Um, and as I said earlier, obviously, America, you know, was uh, so um, uh, racist against black people. That was uh, uh, so we know that's that's there. A lot of places didn't even need to say anything. But um uh, I, I I don't know, you know, I don't have those in my collection, but I'm sure that exists. Uh, Bill, I, Ashley writes again, uh, the Tudor Hotel, is that a, a, a Christian cross on at the T? I'm uh, not sure what you meant you were talking about. Um, on the Tudor Hotel, um, I don't remember myself. I'd have to go back in and look at that. Okay. Um, do, you me, do you want me to do that? Uh, if you can find it quickly, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that too. I think it was. While Greg is at, uh, looking, let me just say that book on hate mail, I haven't seen it, but I can imagine uh, the Jewish connotations. Also remember Irish. They were the drunks. They were the policemen. Yeah. Lots of uh, characters are ugly about Irish too. Bill, I want to go back to the question when someone asked if there were other groups, because I did scan two cards that I'd like to show you. And uh, one of them is a province town. It's this one. 
And um, we saw this in the presentation, although the wording on the front, is the picture is exactly the same. It says restricted patronage. And this is in Provincetown. And I don't, Provincetown is at the end of Cape Cod. I live at the beginning, 90 miles away. But anyway, Provincetown, it probably for the last 70 years or so, is very much a very accepting community of everyone, really, chiefly a gay community for many years. But anyway, this postcard says restricted patronage. And um, there's a dealer on the uh, on Bradford Street, the main street of Provincetown, and he's an antique dealer, but he has a lot of postcards. And every summer I go there a couple of times and sell him things. And I brought this postcard to show him because I was shocked that it said restricted patronage. We concluded that it was probably be referring to 1940s terminology, Negroes. However, you know, there was some new insights into the presentation today that, uh, you know, makes us realize that this would include Jews too. But anyway, it's interesting to think that this postcard was 1940, it's postmark 1944, and the way Provincetown has evolved over the years. And there's another postcard that I'd like to show you. So the, you see over here, it says, SWAT the KKK, which mm. makes me believe I have 20 of these postcards, and they were put out by a group called the Rail Splitter from Illinois. They all have the same type of background. They're all anti-Catholic, and some of them are very interesting uh, to look at. I've had these for many years, at least 30 or so, but it does, you know, I, I wondered what the rail splitter was, but obviously there's that relationship to uh, the KKK there. About the cards apparently are quite valuable. I don't know if you can find any on eBay today or any of the other, um, you know, dealers that are online. But uh, so I think that does answer the question about, you know, different groups that were discriminated against over many years. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, now, if you'd like, I can share. If you'll stop sharing, I have that tutor, po uh, tutor brochure up for everybody to look at. Yeah, Greg, it's actually Aaron's here. What I was talking about is the T in the, the paragraphs where it says the solarium. Yeah, oh, there. yeah, yeah. That, that That is a cross. I would have yeah. to say it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a familiar representation of cross and Christian wow. literature. So, yeah. Well, who uh, Who is that speaking? It's Ashley Aaron's in Arkansas. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. That, that's another good point with that card. You're welcome. My wow. lifetime of being raised a Christian had me recognize that. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, there you go. Okay. Just another thank subtle you. signal, you know, another subtle, subtle yeah. signal. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Thank you. Larissa made the point uh, that uh, uh, about the eugenics movement is sort of crossed into a lot of this sort of stuff, not not just anti-Semitic, but but all over the place. Um, and have you found that crossover to be particularly present in what you've seen? Um, well, you know, I, I mean, uh, Clarissa got it right. I mean, eugenics started here. Um, however, really, uh, it, it kind of faded a bit and really, uh, uh, you know, uh, raised its ugly head in, in Europe. I have a, a two volume set I bought for a uh, museum exhibit that never ended up happening from night I think they're both from the uh, Munich and from the university they are two ultra rare I have a uh, bond one and bond two volume one and two of these eugenic books from Germany uh really scary stuff but I really don't focus too much on eugenics in, in, in the sense that it's um uh, I have material on it not on postcards I haven't seen it on this kind of stuff it's more like uh uh, you know, publications and, and actual books and other types of publications about it. I think there are some cards out there. I don't know if I have them in my collection or not of that organization in the U.S. I wonder if I, um, I remember seeing it. I don't remember if I acquired it or not. Um, there was an organization that was a eugenics supporting organization and there was a postcard about it, but it was few and far between. Um, 
eugenics is not specific to just Jewish people. It's obviously anybody, um, and we saw that with Hitler, whether it was the Slavic people, the Roma people, and so on, it was anybody that wasn't of this Nordic, uh, Germanic, Aryan sort of uh, um, uh, persuasion, if you will, I don't know what word to use. So it was something that crossed all humanity, um, not just uh, one particular group, but of course they used it terribly um, against the Jewish people, which uh, uh, was pretty easy to do at, at that point. So it went, it went uh, beyond that because if all the people minded, handicapped, yeah. people that are poor, the people that are poor in the Appalachian yes, were considered exactly. not, not worse to be kept and they were sterilized. So, and that, that's, that's a great point, Clarissa. And just for example, I'm giving a presentation a week from Monday uh, down at the Holocaust Museum in Houston. And uh, it's, I think I, I labeled this one called Medicine Without Conscience. I used to um, give that at the uh, hospital on post up at Fort Hood, now Fort Cavazos here, just north of Austin. And um, I, I have in there a good bit of stuff about the T4 program, the eugenics program against the uh, uh, mentally and physically uh, challenged people. And, um, uh, you know, I also have the stuff about how they were the trials with that and so on. Uh, but th that was the uh, it was called T4 and it was the eugenics program um, that, pardon me, the euthanasia program, because those people were, um, you know, not good for the gene pool, if you will. So, uh, yeah, this stuff is uh, it's heavy duty over in Europe at that time. They were and these were German citizens. Um, they, they, it, it, you know, the Jewish people were Germans as well. But this this went beyond what faith you were or, or, or what race you were. It was strictly something about your physical and mental uh, capabilities. Alan Mann writes, uh, representatives of the National Socialists visited the U.S. Uh, in order to understand Jim Crow laws. They went back and reported that these laws were harsh yep. uh, to replicate back in, our, in Nazi Germany. Uh, and, and they, and, and I, Bill, I think the important thing with Alan's comment is the reason they did that, they tried to make it look like what they were doing against, you know, their, their racial profiling, if you will. They used that America was equally guilty with what we were doing with Jim Crow and other things. That, that was their whole rationale for that, was to justify that if America was doing it, it's okay for them to do it. And uh, obviously, uh, well, we had enough of our own problems, but uh, didn't end up with the ma mass slaughter of uh, uh, millions and millions of people like the, uh, like the Germans and their collaborators did. But uh, Alan, that's a great point. Thank you. What I don't know how many of you know Alan, but Alan has such insight into so many different topics. We're communicating all the time, all, all, all week long on all different topics and uh, sharing ideas and thoughts and, and, and information. It's, he's really quite, a, um, um, quite an asset um, on, on very many. You know, I like him as a friend, but he's, for everybody, he's quite, a, uh, uh, quite an asset. Mm -hmm. Paulson wants to know, what was the name of the book that you showed? Uh about the postcard sent by the boy on the inter on the Kinder's transport. It is called uh, Postcards to a Little Boy from Daddy. And of course, Alan Mann answered the question before I even spoke it, so. Okay. <laughs> and it was published um, in, uh, it says Yad Vashem, Jerusalem, 2013. And it's a kin it says it's a kinder transport story. For those of you who may not know, um, Jewish children from Germany were transported um, by train once they reached <clears throat> the coast of England and uh, put in various families to try to save the children while their parents were being, um, you know, taken to concentration camps and slaughtered. We actually gifted. Uh, I bought a very rare collection from two uh actually there were uh, postcards in in there as well but i bought it specifically to give it to the u.s holocaust memorial museum in washington a collection of two german sisters one was sent on the kinder transport to uh england the other one went to what was then palestine today israel and um 
it's the correspondence and photographs, hundreds um, back and forth uh, between the two. And they're in the process of, uh, I, I, I gifted it so they could digitize it and put it out so people could translate it. Some is in English and uh, Yiddish and um, in German and all, you know, it's various languages. So uh, it's really important stuff to preserve this. Uh, we call it rescuing the evidence. Okay, we've pretty much run out of uh, comments, although Alan Mann just put another one up. I come from the town where Kinsberg Transportation uh, arrived in England. It's also the home of the Mayflower. You see um, similar discriminatory stuff against the Chinese American community in the run up to World War I. Hmm. You know, and, and they're discriminated in terms of um, immigration laws. Um, uh, being at, at, and they're not, there's there's pressure on them not to hire white waitresses, um, which is interesting as well. So there's, there's some definite uh, parallels of, of an other group being um, discriminated against. Um, I, I did send in some pictures of the Hotel Libby. Oh, oh, if you Kyle. Bring those up. Kyle, I wanted to actually thank you for doing that. Uh, Kyle sent me an email earlier today. I didn't see it till it was late. <clears throat> the, the, the difference here, and I really want to make this point today, the Hotel Libby, it, it says an all-Jewish hotel. It wasn't ever advertised. It, it said, you know, other people couldn't stay there. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. At their Turkish baths and at their lounges and so on, they were open to everybody. But just like many of the hotels that ended up in the Catskills and so on, I think the key word here, Kyle, is they catered to Jewish people. They had kosher restaurants. They had Yiddish entertainment, music, and so on to, to meet the needs of people, immigrants coming into America. Remember, this is 1926, so that image when this postcard um, uh, was done. The Hotel Libby is, is, is famous, obviously, much has been written about it. But it wasn't for Jewish people only. It was designed for Jewish people to go have kosher meals, um, enjoy their Yiddish music and entertainment as they saw back where they came from. So that's a very important distinction here. Um, anybody could go to hotels in the Catskills, but the key word is they cater to a Jewish clientele where Jewish people would feel comfortable and could eat the foods that they were accustomed to that were kosher and get the entertainment that they wanted to see. So that, that's really what this is all about. And you can see that uh, if you research the Hotel Libby. Um, it's a fascinating thing. There's also a history with that. And I don't know if you know about this, that years later in an excavation, when they were going to, re, uh, they tore it down years later, a new building went up. Um, they actually found a room that was still had all its books and everything of the Hotel Libby underground. It was a, a subterranean um, room, you know, like a basement part of it. And they never took the stuff out. They just filled it with concrete and put the building up over it. Yeah, years uh, after, years after it came down. But you can see here on the back of your card, it talks about the Turkish bass or Russian bass, whatever. Yeah. And, and that that was all open to the public. There was no issue with anything. They, these hotels were not discriminatory. They were just catered to Jewish uh, clientele. You could go there. If you didn't want a kosher meal, why would you go there? Yeah, could you show the 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 hit the dining room for the bass card? Should be the next. Yeah, it, these two cards are from a collector's viewpoint are very difficult to find. you have never seen cards. it anywhere else. And there's there's a um, internet article as well about the hotel, about the the pottery, and the pottery sort of kind of mimics the the wall decorations as well. So we get a kind of a a feeling for the the. The ethos of the hotel, the the decor, and 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 whatnot. So wonderful. Thanks wonderful. for the clarification. Sure, yeah, beautiful, really nice. <clears throat> anyway, thank you all so much. This has been wonderful and enlightening, and all those words that you use. And uh, thanks for postcards and learning about more. Thank you again.